Hey everyone, welcome to the Evoked Thoughts Podcast. We're back at it again. Uh, today we are, well, first and foremost, let me uh, apologize for the long hiatus. We all uh, were kind of having our holidays and uh, I really didn't mean to say something, but it just kind of slipped my mind. Everything got very uh, convoluted over that period of time. But now we're back and we're back today with another fun topic. Uh, we are going to be discussing... Um, the Marvel comics, uh, as well as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and just the general idea of it. We've got a bevy of different kind of uh, beliefs and uh, hopes and dreams regarding Marvel uh, sitting here on these couches. And so uh, we're just going to have a great discussion about it and just kind of, uh, you know, start off with uh, how we're feeling about what things have been, what we're thinking about what's coming up, and what we're excited for, and kind of the, the future of all these things. So, uh, I'm Jay, as you guys know. Oh, I'm Tommy. And I'm Alex. And uh, this is, uh, we've got a guest this week, uh, Mason, long-term friend of mine, uh, and uh, as, as far as I know, pretty, pretty big uh, Marvel fan specifically, not necessarily the comics, but fan of the characters at the very least, for sure. X-Men, I think. <laughs> uh, hello. Uh... <clears throat> All right, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and kick it off. Uh, to start, uh, I'd like to just kind of go around, we'll just pass it in kind of a clockwise fashion, not that it's relevant to you guys, you know, uh, but... We're going to pass it around and just kind of say kind of um, what our experience is with Marvel as a whole. Um, I'd say that generally uh, I've seen every movie. Uh, I haven't missed anything that I can think of. Even really pre-cinematic universe, I've been pretty on the ball with most of it. Um, I'm not much of a comic reader myself. I don't know that I've ever really finished a Marvel comic, uh, but I definitely am aware of kind of what's going on in the comics. I've been watching a lot of the videos that kind of wrap up the uh, state of how it is now. And I think in general, I mean, I want to see it thrive and I'm excited about it, you know, but uh, it's become harder for me. So I think I'm a lapsing Marvel fan, I think would be a good way to put me. I was raised, um, well, my father, huge, not necessarily just specifically Marvel, just comic book, comic book fan. I had the original, like, a print print of Spider-Man, didn't even recognize it. Just raised by it, was around it, knew the stories, knew the characters, knew the ideas of it. And in the similar place, I've seen probably most all of the movies at this point. There's a couple I've most missed over, honestly, the Thor ones. Because uh, they're forgettable and yeah, they're 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 okay to miss. I'd say. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a place, frankly, that I love the stories. Um, comics have done some weird things, but I've never been greatly disappointed by the stories, and I'm still excited to see where they're going. But the cinematic universe, I've begun to not be able to care less. But um, out outside of. Um, Marvel Studios, actually, um, looking at Into the Spider-Verse and the uh, Deadpool stuff and even to a certain degree Venom, I am intrigued by the stories they're telling and the different takes they're having on characters. So outside of Marvel, I'm enjoying the Marvel, Marvel movies a lot. <laughs> um, well, in regards to Marvel, uh, you said in the question, um, you said uh, our early experiences with Marvel. Uh, I grew up loving the X-Men. Um, Wolverine is my favorite character, has mm -hmm. been for a long time and probably always will be. Oh yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> I remember watching the X-Men, X2, and X-Men Last Stand movies and I think this forever will be some of my favorite movies. I've watched them more recently and they're not as good as I remember but I still love them. Uh, maybe it's just nostalgia but uh, so I'll always love Marvel. Uh, in regards to the cinematic universe uh, since it started, well, I gotta say, I, I, I liked it at first, but it's really disappointed me recently. I actually have missed a, a couple of the last parts of the, that universe because, and I don't know if it's just my disdain for Hollywood. Um, I think I can't trust Hollywood with uh, some of that stuff anymore. Like, I just... I mean, almost all movies I don't watch anymore now, uh, except for horror movies now. And uh, I mean, I just, I lost faith in Hollywood, I think, so. I'm just really happy that you said Wolverine was your favorite X-Men character because like, duh. <laughs> and also I can't blame you either for the X-Men, like liking the X-Men movies. Cause I remember as a kid too, like that second movie when Nightcrawler comes out, dude, I freaking lost my shit as a kid. 
like that first scene that you see of Nightcrawler, dude. In oh, the dude, White in, House. In the rap. Remember that? We were talking about in the White House. In the White House. I think like in the White House. Oh, that was yeah, that yeah. was a great scene. Dude, yeah. it was so good. But also all the independent Wolverine series like that led up to Logan. <clears throat> dude, I loved all of those. Those are all really good. I'd still watch them and enjoy them, even though they kind of mess with Deadpool though there for a second. You know, they're still good movies. They mess with everything. They're so campy and fun. But it was still fun. It was Saber still Tooth fun was movie. great. Saber Tooth was okay. No, no, no. Tooth was the great. dude. I don't that know actor, his name. I cannot remember his name. Yeah, but he plays. Movie. He has his own series where he's like a Hollywood cleanup guy or yeah, something. Yeah, Ray, Ray Donovan. Yeah, yeah. he's and also the voice of Wilson Fisk and in Into the Spider Verse. See, oh. that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah, he's, he's, a he's a great, great actor. actor. I, I want to remember his name. I might even look it up. Um, but also <laughs> on another note, going back to Alex and talking about the Thor movies real quick. Um, yeah. I didn't even know there was three Thor movies. I thought Ragnarok was the second Thor movie. And then I realized, <laughs> oh, there's a one in between. That makes me so happy. And I'm not even joking. Someone said, oh, no, there's something. But they said, started talking about Dark Elves. And I'm like, what are they yeah. talking about? Yeah, Remember the time, Loki, Thor when the Dark movie. Elves came? And I was like, what? Yeah, there's a second Thor movie that makes no sense, has no real continuity in canon other than that it introduces an Infinity Stone and, like... See, I didn't I even do that! It's, like, 65% subtitled, too. Like, it's really bad. Dude, but I guess <laughs> Thor: uh, The World, what a gem! And then, and then I yeah, watch Ragnarok, movie right? Of all time, by far. And then, I, and then I watch, <laughs> I watch Ragnarok, right? And there's all these great concepts in there of like sci-fi and all this. I'm like, dude, this is cool, but like, it's downfall, man. It's the same thing that like also ruined Guardians too, like, which is just the. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but his name is Lee Schreiber, the uh, guy who plays Ray Donovan and, and also Wilson Fisk as well as... That's good. Uh, we need to give him credit. Yeah, man. he definitely actor, deserves phenomenal. credit. Really, really, really great role as, uh, as Sabretooth. I think he was probably, in my opinion, the best thing about the, uh, the Wolverine... Uh, uh, not the Wolverine, the Origins Wolverine movie. Yeah. <clears throat> the Wolverine? Yes. But now you're getting that. me back to Wolverine. The, the like, Wolverine. Shout out to Logan, man. That freaking movie? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're oh, talking about gosh. X-Men. I mean... Going back to that. There are very few comic book, sci-fi, really any kind of, like, supernatural aspected, you know, not set in our world kind of movies that I would call, like, a film. And, like, Logan really stands as a masterclass in so many areas that, like... That's the, that's the kind of thing that, to me, the Oscars should be for. Well, you know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of stuff that, like... Because we're not just talking about, like, you made a good movie. We're also talking about, like, you took a character and made them in such a convincing way, you know, that it was different than what we'd seen before, but, like, believable and made sense because you set it up. And, I mean, I could be talking about Logan right now, but I could also be talking about Charles Xavier in that movie, who mm. also was super convincing mm. and had a really, really amazing plot line. And, like... We don't even know the real truth about what they're saying happened with everything, but like, there's so much there in just those performances that by the actors, you know. Dude, it uh, was Patrick a Stewart story. It was a story in a world. That that's what that was. That was yeah, so man. cool. And you could have just as easily set that in. You could have said, you know, random sci-fi movie with these two characters, and and I would. It doesn't even need to be a super. Like you don't need all you the con- I mean? you you kind of get the context from the world. But yeah, I just believe. Yeah. Like you just you presented me something that I believed. There. Well, part of it is that I mean, Hugh Jackman and uh, Patrick Stewart have been playing these characters for what, almost two decades yeah. now. Oh, God. So that yeah. was like their grand finale. Yeah, there, like, these are characters that these are actors that know exactly how their characters interact with the others' characters. It's not a question of okay, what is what's happening? It's no. What's it's, my motivation? What's my motivation? <laughs> As if either of those characters <clears throat> have that, of course. Yeah, but um. Right. The other thing, though, that I want to say, man, Logan, because, like, we've all seen, especially for Marvel now, this pumping out superhero, superhero, superhero movies, we've all seen the basic take on superheroes and, you know, the villain, this, this, and that, but, like, it's so interesting when you see, I guess it's kind of like a deconstruction equivalent, yeah. you know, like, when you see it done with Logan, when you see it done with Watchmen, and I think there's a couple other movies, but when you, like, just see something different, like, it's just not the straightforward thing here where it's just the superhero and the villain. There's, like, bigger things going on. There's a bigger story. Logan, it's, like, this washed-up hero. 
you know, having to like face that he's getting old, he's going to die. And it's just like, yeah. there's a new generation and there's no hope for them. And the whole part of being this older guy is to pass the mantle, but he can't pass the mantle to anything because there's no mantle to pass it to. Right. And, now, now avoiding, yeah. avoiding spoilers, just to make sure that we're yeah, clarifying yeah. that. But uh, I, I definitely, I love what everyone's saying, but I definitely want to hear from uh, Mason. Yeah, you've already been your favorite say. character mm-hmm. and, and, you know, Marvel being kind of the, the basis of your fanhood with this. Like, what did you think of Logan? Uh, Logan was great. Uh, it was kind of sad because, uh, I mean, seeing the character I love, you know, getting old. Oh, I'm not supposed to spoil, am I? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that, that's in you haven't movie. spoiled it yet. That's fine. No, well, it's yeah, a basic. Yeah. That's, like, that's in know. the trailers. That's fine. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that movie was great. And I liked the uh, previous movies that came out about Wolverine, like X-Men Origins. Mm-hmm. I liked that one. Mm-hmm. I also liked The Wolverine. But I think Logan really surpassed those two because those the first two that i mentioned uh, origins and the wolverine those were good movies but i think maybe my thoughts about how i feel about wolverine personally made them good Mm. but i think Mm. that the way that logan was made that one was a good movie even if you're not a huge wolverine fan right right oh yeah i mean the cinematography of that film on its own is breathtaking yeah i i i've Bear looked into it, but I know some of the rigging for those shots was ridiculous. Oh, dude, it was... Oof. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that that, uh, that car chase scene kind of out of the uh, the compound they were in through the fence and everything, and I think it was a limousine. Like, yeah. I can't imagine that was easy to do and, like, seeing the way that they did it and how, honestly, thinking back on it, I can't think of a lot of CGI in that movie. I think there were some big set pieces, but generally I feel like that had to have been mostly practical for the effects. And I, I mean, for the most part, I think Wolverine is generally a pretty practical effect character uh, because, you know, his power doesn't really lend too much to too much CGI being needed. But like really thinking about it, yeah, now that I'm going back, I'm like, gosh, there must have been a lot of like real stunt work and like planned, you know, set, set up kind of, uh, you know, explosions and set pieces and stuff and so oh yeah, yeah definitely master class so mason so you said that you're a big wolverine fan and trying to like step away from like films and everything because you know we're trying to do everything marvel i don't have you read or at least like know about the old man logan comics um the old man logan comics the old man logan uh i don't know a ton about it i know i mean but you know like generally what it is yeah okay okay um yeah, that's just something that I know a lot about, and, like, I didn't know if you would or anything, because, like, you know, they're just, just, it's essentially, like, you take Logan from, like, um, one of the, you know, many dimensions in Marvel, and, like, you kind of, like, ship him into, like, a dystopian era kind of thingy, and it, it was just a really cool thing, I didn't know if you knew about it or not. I mean, you're, you're welcome to talk on it, you know, I, our, yeah. uh, listeners may not know, you know, much about it, so definitely, you know, give the, give the kind of rundown on it. It's just kind of, like, I brought, I brought it up because, um... It, or it, I think that's where the, the actual Logan movie stro- drew a lot of inspiration off of it. And it was kind of the same concept of, like, Logan getting older, you know, in the comments, like, you know, I'm going to avoid spoilers on this. But there's stuff that he's done. He's living, you know, just trying to live out his days, just dying and everything. And there's this whole big thing where he's in dystopian world. Like, everything's turned upside down. Like, I think Red Skull, like, like all the villains take over the world. They each own uh, certain parts of the world and everything, like Red Skulls in America and everything, like where's Captain America's mask and all this stuff. And it was just kind of like that darker version of like that world and like just a darker story with it and everything, just seeing, you know, just this struggling hero just trying to be done and just trying to have like one last stand. So it was, it was just an interesting take. And I just know that they even said it that uh, the creators of the Logan movie took a lot of inspiration from the Old Man Logan comics, so... I've got to say, not knowing much about it, just that little blurb that you gave gives me enough to like want to go read it or like see something that like does that. The there, idea of like yeah. the villains owning specific parts of the world and stuff is like that's really cool. There no, questions yeah. like are there other heroes that are fighting back? Is oh, there, there is. I, I just was or... trying to avoid spoilers on this. No, I, I there is a really that. it's it's a really intriguing story, and then it it goes. I think it's still running and everything, but it's it's fascinating, man. So. Yeah. So, because we're kind of on the X-Men uh, bend, I want to kind of make sure that we cover you know, as many facets as we can of each of these kind of different aspects of what makes Marvel as a whole. And I think the X-Men's a really important one. Um, there's a movie, you know, that, that came out that uh, I personally had a very, uh, kind of a strange feeling about um, 
talking about uh, Days of Future Past. I think that a lot of people gave it a lot of credit as being this really amazing movie. But to me, I remember going in and feeling like um, this movie is like half of what I wanted from a really, really good X-Men movie. I think there was a lot of good uh, story beats and a lot of cool effects, but I think what it was missing, in my opinion, was real, like, character. I guess I just didn't believe the characters. When I'm looking at Logan, where, like, these are real people living in a world and you get them, I feel like in Days of Future Past, part of it was there was such a huge cast that it was kind of hard to keep it all together. But um, I know, uh, you know, knowing Mason as well as I do, that uh, Days of Future Past is kind of one of his... Uh, favorite comics. So I would love to hear you uh, talk about uh, kind of why you love Days of Future Past or how you felt about the movie adaptation of it. Well, uh, with Days of, Days of Future Past, uh, I kind of think about how normal book readers are when they go to see a movie about a book that they read, how they're always disappointed because, you know, Hollywood likes to change things. Maybe a character dies here and uh, they died in the book, but they don't die in the movie, and you know, and, uh, and I, I have some of those uh, grievances with the Days of Future Past. I thought it was a good movie, um, but it was good as a different story than the actual Days of Future Past from the comics. Uh, there's a lot of pretty big uh, differences. First of all, in the original comic, uh, it wasn't Wolverine that got sent back in time. Uh, it was uh, uh, Kitty. Um, and they had, and I think in the actual comic book, they had a really good reason for why it was her that got sent back. Um, she was like just a part of the X Men, and they wanted, uh, or and she couldn't, like over time, the X Men learned how to, um, you know, they're psychics like Xavier. They learned how to like block psychics, not like from being able to, to uh, like read their thoughts, but to like really penetrate what they're trying to hide. They, they, they learned how to like block it out. But she, since she was just a new X-Men, she didn't know how to do that yet. So they had to send her back in time because uh, she had, uh, Xavier knew that she hadn't um, learned how to do that yet. So she, when he read her mind, he would know that it was the actual truth and that they would actually believe her. Um, and so that big difference made the entire movie different from the comics. And I like the comics a lot better, but I do think that as almost a different story, it was a good movie. Um, but uh, it'll never be what the comic was for me. So. No, and that's fair. I mean, there, you're, you make a fair point. There's different stories at that point, and it's an opinion I have about adaptations, but I think an adaptation should be a different story. It's... You take the same premise, the same ideas or themes, imagery, whatever you want, however you want to, how far you want to break down those ideas into just really simple. It's just this characters kind of shuffle in the case of uh, Days of Future Path movie or in the case of some other things, um, nothing off the top of my head, but where you just break it down to its fundamental ideas, the things that create the story. Uh, uh, oh, um, totally off topic of Marvel, but the, uh, Death, the Death Note um, mm. live action film. Uh, yeah, where yeah. it's, you take the fundamentals of there is the Death Note, there are the Shinigami. That's it. The characters share names, but that's just <clears> to create familiarity <throat> with like, different. here's your protagonist, here's how you know this is your protagonist. Right. But it's a totally different story for a different audience, different perception, everything. That's how I feel an adaptation should be. I don't know. Uh, I actually, I think you're right about that because, well, for one, if you do the exact same as a book or a comic book, there's not as much of that surprise factor. People know exactly what's going to happen. Um, so, I mean, I see your point on that. So. Also, because it, if you just wanted the same thing, just go absorb the previous media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Well, it will be. <laughs> well, we, uh, we definitely plan on making an episode about that at some point. I think there's a lot to cover there, and uh, definitely please tune in if you guys are, are interested in that topic. Um, however, right now, uh, now that we've kind of talked about uh, X-Men, I think that generally we've kind of covered most of the bases. Uh, we could talk about Apocalypse, but I don't think we have to. <laughs> Does anyone really have Look, something to say all about I know is, all I know is the first Quicksilver scene from the uh, Days of Future Past was better than the second. That's all I have Dude, to say. Dude, Time in a Bottle is <clears throat> perfect. 
Dude, just Perfect. the song, the pairing, and the first time you see it, and then they try to like, do it again with the second one. Well, I was like, Sweet it's Dreams cool, is a great song, like, and like the scene was an interesting idea, but I think that it it had already been lightning in a bottle, and they released it, and you can't put lightning back in the bottle, you know? No, it man, like, it was better with the water drops around the room, and it was yeah, a circular man. room. It just, it was oh, a different was concept. So, like, you expect the explosion. You didn't expect yeah, him to run around a circular dude, room like that. Staging-wise, like, yeah. that first scene, the time in a bottle scene, that was the name of the song. Exactly. It was by, like... By Jim Krause, really good singer. Yeah, you know, just, as just well. Just gonna put that well. out there, great musician. But, like, just a beautifully shot, beautifully rendered, like... Really perfectly staged, yeah. Circular room, lots of stuff going on, and then Dude, this one was just kind of all over the place. I think, was, yeah. I think it missed the mark. But yeah, uh, beyond that, I think speaking about apocalypse myself, I think my biggest problem with it was actually apocalypse. I think that generally, you know, everyone was as true to their characters as we had seen them be in any of the other cinematic stuff, other than maybe uh, some of the newcomers you know who what? didn't necessarily get the character yet. They didn't really have it running yet. What's up? I really like Magneto in Apocalypse. I know that's controversial, I guess. I don't know. But I really like Magneto in Apocalypse. I think I really, really love uh, the portrayals of uh, Magneto uh, by Fassbender as well as the uh, Patrick Stewart by... Uh, oh, jeez. Why can't I remember his name? <laughs> yeah, I don't know his name either, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Sink or swim. Uh, oh, oh, oh my God! His face is in my head. He's one of the most perfect human beings. <laughs> I'm aware, and I can't remember his name. <laughs> Sink or swim. You have a phone. <laughs> uh, okay, but anyway, I love what else has he been the in? Uh, the portrayals of the characters, and I think honestly, Fastbender's Magneto is something that is so hard for people to uh to decide how they feel about him Dude, he's because i great. think that he's like he's been really good and then sometimes he's had to lean in more to the camp of the comics and i think that if if i have any parts that i don't like about him i think it's when he's more magneto i think that to me and i can't again i don't really read the comics so i can't really speak to who eric is in the comics but i know that in the movies eric like, Fassbender playing Eric is so much more interesting than Fassbender playing Magneto. Because I think that, to me, Magneto is the option he ne he realizes is necessary at certain times. But Eric is, like, who he is. He says he's Magneto, but he's not. Because he's still affected by the things he was affected by. And I think that that's, like, there's no other actor who can portray that the way he does, I don't think. I think he's one of the most, like dramatically uh, believable actors that I've ever seen, at least, Fassbender. But yeah, I mean, now that we are talking about Apocalypse, uh, what, what, is, what is everyone's thoughts on Apocalypse? I did not see it. To. Did you really? Wait, what? Oh my god, ever? I saw, I saw the trailers and I'm like, uh, oh my god, wow. I mean, it's fair, man. It... As a whole, it wasn't a great movie, and honestly, if they removed it from the continuity, and I, 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 this isn't definitive, this is my opinion, you know, but I think if they removed it from the continuity, I wouldn't miss it, and I wouldn't notice. I can't speak for that entirely, because I don't know how much Dark Phoenix is going to rely on its plot, but like, other than, you know, the new introduction to people like Sophie Turner, and uh, I don't know who played Nightcrawler, but, you know, these new characters, or these new actors playing these old characters, uh, I don't know that Apocalypse was really, like memorable in any capacity which is insane because it's apocalypse but yeah no way well also apocalypse is completely different in the comics from what i remember yeah. their gambit was more prominent during that whole storyline like there was a big thing with him and i like, mean he became a horseman in or comics like and that. um in animation gambit is always much more of a big character yeah. i need more they, gambit where's my gambit i was promised a channing tatum movie with gambit look where it, is my movie it honestly your gambit damn it <laughs> where's my gambit damn it but i will say I do prefer the one from X-Men Origins Wolverine, that Gambit. I love that Gambit. That Gambit was mm. the best Gambit. Taylor Kitsch, uh, Friday Night Lights fame, was a really, really great casting for that role. And I think so many people want to hate on Wolverine, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, that they didn't really allow the people who did an amazing job to shine. And I think, mm -hmm. like like with uh, Lee I mean, Schreiber, I think movie. that, man... Taylor Kitsch's Gambit was the most faithful adaptation I've seen of that character in a long time. Very believable, very good, and like, I would really be okay with him of, of staying on for the long run as that character, but I think the problem really was that um, 
The movie bombed so hard that I don't think Taylor Kitsch wanted to come back. Uh, this is my, you know, my, my assumptions of what happened. And, uh, mm. and Lee Schreiber, you know, I don't think wanted anything to do with it. And it just kind of evened out where they just haven't had anyone who could play Gambit yet. And the Channing Tatum thing, through no one's real fault as much as I understand, but from what I've heard about the news of it all, it just seems like there are a lot of things going wrong with that. And Marvel as a whole has been trying to acquire the X-Men property back from Fox for a long time. So if it changes back to Marvel from Fox, then they've kind of got to switch a lot of stuff up. They can't have all the same characters and stuff. And so there's a lot of politics going into that that stopped it for a good four years or so, which sucks because honestly, Shane Tatum seems really excited about the role and he's been doing a lot of it. And I think he said something about how he's got like Cajun heritage or something. And so it's something that like, that's what I want. I want the actor who's excited. I want the people who want to see this character come through because mm. that's how you get someone faithful, you know? That's but, how you get the freaking Punisher, that actor for the Punisher oh, series. God. That's how you get that. Yeah. The uh, dude who is like, I'm researching uh, the comics. They're Barenthal. really going to... Uh, Joseph yeah. Barenthal, maybe? James... Uh, and that dude did that character so McAvoy! Faithfully. McAvoy. He did that character <laughs> so faithfully. McAvoy is Xavier. Sorry. I've been trying to think of it. Um, but yeah, go, go ahead and uh, if anyone else has anything to say about Apocalypse, go ahead and cover that. I'm oh, look real up quick, the only thing I wanted to say, you said that you might they might not get anything relevant from it. The only, the only thing that I see that they would take relevancy in is at the very end... John Barenthal. At the, at the very end of the movie, they... They did that. They did that scene where, like, they were training the new guys and everything to kind of set up, I guess, for the next movie. You know, and I remember I saw Sophie Turner's character, Sophie Turner's Jean Grey, at the end too. Like, all kitted up. Everyone was all kitted up, like, ready to, like, you know, train and everything. So that's the only thing I could see them like making relevant with that whole thing. But yeah, I also don't think they did Apocalypse Justice. That's a huge storyline for the X Men. Yeah, I think um, it, there's a lot of stuff they could take from it. I think, honestly, if, if I was an executive, which I'm not, and I don't know what they're really thinking about. I do, but I'm not going to talk about money here too much. Um, <laughs> man, I would try to move away from it as much as I can. I think that, as a whole, the fan base didn't like it. I mean, even people who really like X-Men wanted to like that movie, and I think we were just presented with something less than perfect, which I we're mean, not expecting perfection all the time, but I think that this was leagues below what even any of the other movies in the series have been, I would argue that Apocalypse honestly had more dead time, less relevance, and less excitement than even Last Stand, mm -hmm. which is saying something. But I think back to Last Stand, and there are some really significantly, not impactful, but I think enjoyable moments in that movie. I think there are bad things about it too as a whole. I mean, there are enjoyable things in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 3. But I think that like in Apocalypse, like I said, if I'm thinking back on it, I can't really think of any scenes or narrative beats that really hit me other than maybe the stuff with Magneto, which I think a lot of people hated, but like, man, any more of that story I can get is, is fantastic. But that, that could just as easily have just been a Magneto movie, which would have been awesome on its own, just a whole backstory movie on him. So yeah, but Mason, what, what did you think of Apocalypse? Did you even see it? Uh, I did see it. Actually, didn't we see it together? We did. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it was a while ago, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just don't think it lived up to uh, who Apocalypse is, uh, so I, I think I'll just leave it at that. All right. I, I can say one thing about that. adaptations, though. I can say one thing about adaptations. <coughs> Even <clears throat> if, like, it's not the same story, if a character was... I, I don't know. If a character was prominent in one story, like, this all-powerful thing, in your adaptation, it should either... Like, be just, it should just be just as prominent, you know? Well, I mean, yeah. part of it, it, an adaptation is that I would say three aspects of the original piece have to be maintained. Whatever those three are, if it's three characters, mm -hmm. if it's the theme, the like emotional idea in one character, that's fine. But I would say maybe three things have to be maintained. And, yeah. And the only thing I will say, because I'm starting to think about it, and I might do this in the future in my like future writings or anything. Think about things? <laughs> No, 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 <laughs> no, that'll never happen. So yeah. it's the idea, like, <clears throat> unless you see, like, in the original adaptation, do you see, like, oh, man, I would do that much better if the main character wasn't that, if, they, if I did this. 
That's the only time I could see that as something like cool. Yeah, but hold on. Here's the thing. Uh, like, really trying to avoid talking about adaptations for too much, but just to counter that point. That's also the exact argument that's basically saying, okay, well, he's Apocalypse, but let's make him green. Let's make him big and sort of muscular. And you know what? Let's just make him say Hulk all the time. Three things just change the entire character into Hulk. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there's just like uh, there's a finite amount of changes you can make before okay. something fundamentally isn't the same. Yeah, but those... But, but save, it, save it for the adaptations talk. There's, there's a lot to discuss there, and I think... Yeah, no, no, because I have a counter to that one. moving back to uh, Marvel. I think that X-Men, we've kind of beat it, into, beat it into the ground, but I think that tangentially, there is something else, another uh, family I would be interested to hear about, because I think that the Fantastic Four have gotten a really interesting oh, run. Oh, God, stop it! Now, the Marvel Cinematic team has acquired, as far as I understand, that the uh, 21st Century Fox deal has gone through at least for uh, the Fantastic Four and X-Men. So as I understand it, by uh, mid phase four, we should be seeing uh, those characters showing up in some capacity. And hopefully soon we hear about some casting, which will be exciting. I will say something though. <laughs> there could be this, this could be a thing the magic rule of three. So, mm. there was the Tobey Maguire's first Spider Man yeah. series, right? Mm -hmm. Then there was the what's his name? What's his name? The second one? Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Then, yeah. you know, Andrew Garfield, I didn't personally like it. You I know? loved him as Spider Man, hated him as uh, Peter yeah. Parker. Which is funny because with, with Tobey Maguire, I loved him as Peter Parker. And hated Didn't, him as Spider-Man. Exactly. Isn't that funny how that just switches around? Yeah. And then there was a third movie with the new Spider-Man series. Really and solid. that's really good yeah. and solid. Tom. So Tom Holland. I don't know. The, I remember Tom the first Tom. Fantastic Three Four. Four. I will always remember, man. I love Jessica Alba. I love all those casts. It was the first Fantastic Four. I really liked uh, Chris Evans as uh, Oh, as Storm. Flaming Torch? That was a yeah, really, yeah, he was yeah. good. really he was good, good casting. Good, I remember even in the really bad movie, because I think the first movie was definitely better than the second movie, but even yes. in the second movie, he was really good. Yeah. Was hey, hey guys, part. did anyone else forget that Chris Evans is funny? Yeah. Did anyone else forget that Chris Evans had roles other than Captain America? Dude, honestly, <laughs> I want to say something, though, too. He's free though. You, He's you know free. what's funny? Out of all the roles, I actually don't like him as Captain America. I don't think I ever have. I honestly despise him as Captain America. I think never if I'm being completely him. honest, there are so many better roles for him in the Marvel universe. I like his flaming Dude, torch you know more. I wanted him to ask, and we'll, uh, you know, we might go into this later in a possible thing that might actually happen uh, within Evo, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, future projects. But, what? um, man. Chris Evans as Hawkeye. That is something I really would have wanted to see. Uh, that, that's a weird one, friend. That's, that's I don't know. Where do, you, where do you see that? That's a mm. Hawkeye story you could tell. Hawkeye is a character I have personally found and what I have read, which isn't a lot notably, but what I have absorbed of him is that he does go either one or two ways of like this kind of jokes character or this no-shit mercenary just dealing with shit. His own personal and the things around him. I guess I think my point is, to me, Hawkeye has been... And remember, again, I am very unfamiliar with Marvel as a whole in terms of like the truth of it, the comics of it and everything. But from what I've seen, what they've presented to me, Hawkeye seems to be sort of like their equivalent of the Flash as far as the team goes. Uh, or at least that's how they've been presenting him, where he's kind of the funnier character who has capabilities but doesn't usually use them too often. Uh, but I don't know. I, I think that... Uh, I think my biggest problem with Chris Evans, going back to the Captain America thing, is that uh, I have a really hard time taking him seriously. I think that as a whole, I know him as a comedic character, and I, I feel like I feel like it kind of shows through even when he doesn't mean it to. And I think that his serious, really dramatic acting, to me, it's not always believable, or it comes off like way too like like he's trying too hard. Which sucks, because I think that he's a good actor, and I think he can do good stuff. I just I just really don't think Captain America was a role for him. Yeah, I mean, I find the most compelling points, um, I for me, um, for Cap that character, Captain America, when he's on screen, is whenever he's being lighthearted, and like, genuinely making quips, not like, poorly crammed in one-liners, or like, weird conversations, but like... Whenever At the Chris airport Evans, when they're talking about New York. <laughs> yeah. Whenever, yeah, like whenever it's a genuinely charming character, whenever you see the Boy Scout, 
That's yeah. One, honestly, that's my favorite time when you see Captain America in comics anywhere. It's like, oh, he's a sweet guy that just is wanting I mean, to do the best. His yeah. movie, his movie, his conversations with uh, knockoff Christoph Waltz were really, really good uh, character moments. I believed him as Steve Rogers as a kid enlisting in the military. Like, I think the first Avenger, the first two mm. acts of Captain America, the first Avenger, his solo movie were good. I didn't like the third act at all, but I think that's just because it was setting up for a bunch of BS that didn't make any sense in the universe they created. But... Well, I mean, it's hard to screw that <laughs> one up. Like, man, if you're a good actor, like, I don't know. And he is. And, and you know, don't don't let me dissuade you. But in, in the way. long First term, I just don't actor. like him as Captain America. Like, yeah, I just don't was, think that Captain you know. America was a good role for him. I think there are so many... Oh my god. Whoa. Dude, Chris Evans could so be the Flash. Yeah. Okay, so... Stop it. Wow. No, hold on. Now I'm thinking about it. I like that a lot. Barry Allen. I like that a lot. Yeah. He could definitely be Barry Allen. Do what I did, my boy. Oh. Oh, but like older too? Oh, yeah. man. When we have Kip Flash around. Oh, Barry dude. Allen. I'm He's sorry, too... we're not talking about DC. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Also, like, we're over here like, excuse me. <laughs> You're right. <clears throat> but sorry. also, he's way sorry. too muscular for that role now. He'd have to go on a really big cut. No, Barry Allen's pretty muscular. But Barry Allen is ripped. Uh, yeah, ripped, not bulky. Uh, he could he could slim down some, but anyway. I'm gonna I'll sit here and talk with going you back, all day, senior. <laughs> look, we will have a DC podcast at some time. Uh, but today, uh, going back, and he has to get up. Uh, let's get back to uh, the Fantastic Four. Yeah. So I think initially, right. My biggest problem is they mucked it up in the beginning with the Sony movies in the sense that, you know, they hit some stuff, but they didn't hit enough stuff and no one wanted it to continue. So when they started this real cinematic universe, we didn't get any of the Fantastic Four. And from what I know about the comics, which again, not a lot, but enough, you know, the Fantastic Four is pretty central to most of the biggest beats in the story. Yep. Reed Richards is one of the most significant characters in the Marvel Universe. I mean, he is the smartest human in the universe. That's, you know, not just something that you scoff at. And I think that in tandem with things like the X-Men or Spider-Man or even Deadpool, there are really, really significant moments that are missing without the Fantastic Four. I mean, they are Marvel's first family. It's a big deal. Them missing also means that we're missing things like the Skrull, which are really significant enemies, you know, and uh, Doctor Doom, who is debatably one of the most significant Marvel. Oh movies. God, I just keep thinking of Logan too. There were so many things. Like no, 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 like the Lo old man Logan comics. No, 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 like the old man Logan comics, man. Because you're talking about Doctor Doom. You're talking about so. Don't much spoil stuff. anything, man. I'm gonna read them. You now. also talked about Hawkeye. Oh, dude, I just kept thinking about them, yeah. dude. Oh, but but God. yeah, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Fantastic Four and kind of how we feel about the movies and then kind of um, what we feel about uh, you know our, our hopes about them being integrated. I actually I'm gonna take it. I adored the first Fantastic Four movie. It was mostly because it was that era of comic book movies where they allowed themselves to be campy mm. and fun. Yeah. And I adored that, especially when that was like the Tobey Maguire and the those the Fantastic Four movies. They were just campy and fun. They felt like a comic book. Mm -hmm. What I hate, hate, mm -hmm. Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is my legitimate favorite Marvel villain. He is a compelling character. He makes sense mm. to me. He's interesting. I love him. And he's fundamentally incorrect in the films. All films. Mm -hmm. By the f nature of, he's not of the same origins as the Fantastic Four. He's a magician. That is a super genius that gets his face welded to a mask. Really, it's just that he's burned and so he keeps it on. But he's not some weird space mutant that... I'm so sad. <laughs> because he's such an interesting character that they just turn into a petty man-child. You that, see, and I thought he had lightning powers for the longest time from that movie. That yeah, his power was just it's lightning. That's nonsense. And for me, yeah. I honestly, um, my only experience with Doctor Doom, again, not being a Marvel fan, was his Fantastic Four movies, which I saw, you know, when they came out when I was a kid, along with the Tobey Maguire Spider Man, which was my only real experience with Spider Man at the time. And like, it, it was the introduction for a lot of people to all these characters. And I think it's such a shame because knowing what I know now, what you've told me, Alex, and what I've read and listened about and everything, I've learned so much about 
who that character is supposed to be. And I think that in terms of like an adaptation doing something differently, but like also interesting, I don't think they succeeded at that at all. I think they really lost a lot of what made that character at all significant. Because I remember really thinking Doctor Doom was pretty lame, but then like playing even just like uh, Ultimate Alliance, you know, Marvel Ultimate Alliance on the PS2, I learned you know, a lot about that character and saw like, wow, he's got a lot more capability and a lot more like reason for doing what he does and like believability as a character. And like, he's not just this <clears throat> super weird amalgamation of like a Mary Sue bad guy for the Fantastic Four. They also like introduced Silver Surfer way too early, man. Yeah. I yeah, don't know. The second movie to they bring just, in Galactus. Like, That's pretty crazy. That, oh dude. Which, to be fair, I don't actually have any problems with how they did Galactus himself because I will admit, a planet-sized man is just wacky. Yeah, the celestial, yeah. yeah, the celestial, and celestial kid wacky. in the comics are just wow. Those are a bunch of really tall guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, the idea of this big, just evil space cloud is wrong, and I don't actually like love but i i see why they did it and i don't have any problems with galactus himself yeah so mason what did you think about the uh, the early fantastic four movies well you know when you watch a superhero movie as a kid you probably love it even if it's not good right oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh i uh i really enjoyed the first one and i've actually watched them sometime in the last six months i think uh because i wanted to i set i set a goal for myself to watch every marvel movie ever made um, yeah, I, I couldn't watch the 1944 like, Captain America. And that was not... <laughs> you couldn't? <laughs> it, it Did just, you try? I tried. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't succeed. Yeah. Um, what's Is this, it I that mean, good? 1944, uh, or, or whenever it was. It was in the 40s. It's a, it was a long time ago. It's just, a gem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I really... Uh, watching them again, I think the first one was really good, and... Silver Surfer, <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't as good. But I actually want to talk more about the one that came out more recently. Yeah, okay. yeah go ahead, uh, Van Forstick, as it is lovingly called. It, it bombed, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it heavily. Was, yeah. yeah, Adam um, bombed. I didn't think it was that bad. Um, no, I, no, I, I never either. watched it. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, I think, well, first of all, uh, about the first ones, the thing looked more like the thing from the comic book in this mm -hmm. first two. But I liked the way the thing looked in this uh, most recent one. Was it more CGI? Uh, it's always CGI. I, I, no, I yeah, think... but like the thing kind of like I saw like they put makeup and stuff on. Yeah, and in, in, in this one, it definitely was uh, a lot more of a rock. Yeah, monster. he actually looked like rock, like he was made of rocks. Whereas... It was more realistic in regards to like what we expect nowadays from yeah. CGI, as opposed to a big rubber suit. Yeah. Because the mm. yeah well yeah the one from early on that was what he looked like in the comics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mo newest movie was what he would actually look like if he was like a real thing, you know. Yeah, like, definitely. Made of yeah, and so um. And he was a monster. I mean, it was really really cool how they depicted him as this like not just like you know their Hulk, but like he was the thing they were afraid of. You know, he was the thing that was shown in the darkness. They didn't show a lot of him for most of the movie. He and was like, the thing. He was the yeah. scary thing that was yeah. out there doing, you know, crushing tanks. Oh, yeah. They did a great job of, like, depicting uh, is Ben Grimm. Is that his name? Yes. Yeah, Ben Grimm's, like, trauma of that. He, oh, yeah, for sure. It, it traumatizes that man. And it, he only gets peace so late in the comics. And even then, it's not a permanent peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. You know what is permanent? His rivalry with Hulk. We gonna get that? It's Maybe. a thing versus Holt movie? Yes. I mean, I, I, I watch know. It. Dude, it'd be like a better Batman versus Superman. Save it for yeah, DC. Well, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, going, okay. going back to the Fantastic uh, Four movie. You said you might uh, want to talk about uh, diversity. Mm, mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, this movie kind of fits that because. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Human Torch. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'd mentioned before we started that I think one of the things I want to hit on is diversity. I think it's, it's definitely an important topic, but I also think that it's a topic that has gotten overblown in some cases, and so I think it'll be a, a good conversation. We can definitely start it now if that's what you want to do. I think in regards to that one, uh, I, I love Michael B. Jordan personally. You know, I'm a, I'm a young black man, and so I, I think he kind of stands to me as uh, one of the only really good young black actors. Uh, I honestly, off the top of my head, can't even 
think of any other young black actor who like has relevance uh, today, which sucks. But um, yeah, I think his casting and, and portrayal of the character was was really uh, really cool. But yeah, why, why don't one of you go ahead and talk about it? Uh, I'll go after somebody else. <laughs> okay, I'll <clears throat> I'll say my thing. I I you know what? I got a little bit up in arms when a lot of people attacked just the fact that he was a black guy. Yeah. Because for me, like, I get it. You want it to be like the original source material. But for me, it doesn't... What matters more, the original source material or, like, the portrayal of the character? What really... What else really changes from him? Yeah. Or what, what else really changes from, you know... Oh, definitely. The I, guy, it, it, other than just the color of his skin. If it's still the same origin, the same story, it's all the same. Different color. And if he can portray that character, like, as he needs to be portrayed... Or even put a better twist on it, you know? I'm all for it, man. I didn't even see the movie, but I just saw there well, was so much controversy. They, even, they covered it in a way. Going into the movie, I thought, oh, this is weird. I love it because I love Michael B. Jordan, and this is going to be fun. But I was like, I don't know that I like that this is uh, what they're doing because I don't know why they're doing it. I mean, I know why they're doing it. But this is, I think, one of my problems with diversity in film and stuff like that is... There's a difference between creating a new character to fill a niche who is uh, of a certain ethnicity or of a certain sexual preference or whatever, um, and letting that not be the focus of the character, but letting that be their truth, right? And making that character believable, right? I think that's a commendable thing to do, and I really enjoy seeing that, because I think those stories deserve to be told, and I don't think they have been accurately, you know, or well in the past. However... What I don't know that I love, I watched a video about it actually today, uh, I wish I remembered the guy's name, I'll link it in the, uh, in the description of the podcast, but I think it was a really good video. He talked a lot about uh, tokenism and the idea of basically not creating a new character, but taking an old character and twisting them in a way that you're filling this niche. And that in a lot of cases, it's not really for a good reason. You're just doing it to try and kind of appease some people, but it doesn't really add to the character, and it's not really believable a lot of times. You know, you look at the new stuff like, uh, like you know, I love Miles Morales, but I think that this, in the beginning, was even an example of that, you know? Um, I think he's a little bit better off because it was a different universe thing. There's a little bit more of a justification to it. But, uh, for example, the uh, female Thor, just like all of a sudden Jane Foster is Thor, and it's like, okay, but like... Why did you do it? Did you really want to tell the story about Thor losing the hammer and being Thor without the hammer? Or did you want to tell a story about a female Thor? And if that's the case, why didn't you just have a female as guardian who comes out and does their own thing? Why do they have to be called Thor? And I get that it's about brand recognition and all that, but it's like, that's so lazy. Like, but aren't also, you better than that, you like, know, as a creator? Doing something for the sake of something other than for it being intriguing, yeah. that's what annoys me. That's Making tokens. a female, yeah, yeah, I, I do get annoyed with that, like, because even if it was with an actor, it's mm -hmm. like, we just want a female, and it's like, okay, if you play a character that's better and we can make an intriguing story, dude, I'm all for that. Yeah. But if you're doing it just for the sake of that, and you're not even beginning to think of the, the actor's talent or anything else, it's just freaking, that's lame. Oh, yeah, I want to um, see, like, I watch movies for, like, the acting, the story, and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I go there to see. On Michael B. Jordan, <laughs> though, uh, what I was going to say, you, I know you haven't seen the movie. No, um, but he's Michael B. Jordan. It. I know he's going to do They justice. describe it in such an awesome way, though, because I was like, how are they going to do this? And the first thing they do is, you know, these guys, they're all working together on this, you know, project or whatever to go to this other dimension or whatever, and they've got this dude who's sort of funding it all, and the guy is black. And you're like, okay, like, who is this guy? And again, I don't know much about the Fantastic Four comics, but like, from what I understand, he wasn't the same kind of character that he was in the comics or like even that significant. Um, but basically what we turn out, uh, what we find out is that uh, this guy is, you know, uh, Sir, uh, Storm Senior, you know, and then Michael B. Jordan's character is, is his son. And they actually adopted... Uh, the Invisible Woman. That's freaking Susan awesome. Storm. Susan Storm. Yeah. I love that. So That's they a creative create way this to do really it. Really awesome bond between these two characters, mm -hmm. as well as like a really believable dynamic that I don't think it was about just let's put some black people in this movie. I think it was about like it, you could have done it with any any. It could have even been white people. Just the fact that like because what I expected. When they did something like this, and you know they've got to be brother and sister. If they're not, it's really weird. 
uh, for like the whole plot of uh. Fantastic Four. So like what I was like really afraid of was that they were going to go the other route where like her white family adopts this black kid who's like disenfranchised and everything. But that's not the case at all. He's like super well off and his dad owns this super awesome scientific company and he like fails in school and stuff. But that's like, you know, him being the cool kid or whatever. But like she's the disenfranchised one who they adopt. And I thought it was a really interesting Dude. kind of turn on it all. I think it's actually... I might actually check out the movie. That is fucking I think cool. actually it got a lot of a bad rep because... Well, it's not the story you expect, but I think in terms of what we're talking about with adaptation, but that's a good way to do they an didn't adaptation. They try though. to be the story yeah. you expect. I think they changed enough that I wasn't looking at this as really a Fantastic Four movie at all. But I kind of saw it as a really cool, interesting sci-fi movie that turned out to feel like a superhero movie by the end. But like, I liked it. You know, I don't, I just really like Michael B. Jordan. So I already knew immediately when he got cast. I'm like, no, I know he's gonna do Torch Justice. Like he's a good actor. I love that actor. Yeah. So it's just like, but man, that's a cool adaptation. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out. Now. Yeah, I think it's really, if there's anything Sounds I didn't intriguing. love about it, it's probably the way that Victor is, uh, is before he becomes Dr. Doom. I like him a lot as Doom. I thought it was really cool how they described it and what his powers are and stuff. It's totally not the character, but like, I didn't really need it to be. Like I said, you could just as easily have told me he was called, you know, freaking Apocalypse. And I'd be like, yeah, cool. I'm in. You know, on the topic of um, diversity, I actually subscribe to the idea that Stan Lee proposed, and may he rest in peace. That amen. And he got a lot of flack for this because people misunderstood what he what he said, and specifically in regard to like Spider Man, and they wanted Spider Man to be uh, there was gay, all kinds of things, but the specifically was they wanted a homosexual Spider Man, a homosexual Peter Parker specifically, and Stan Lee didn't like that specifically because. Peter Parker is a character that's been established for decades, and he would so much rather see an original character that has their own limelight that isn't living in the past and shadow of different interpretations. That's why I actually adore Miles Morales, is that you want a black Spider-Man? Yeah, we'll make an entirely new character with his own motivations, story, and personality. It isn't just Peter Parker, but black. It's a different character. If you want a different story a different person to kind of tell the same idea you make a different character because then you can have that character be done justice it's not just yeah but i want spider-man to be black so i made him black it's we have a whole new character that fills that niche that is their own person they don't have to live up to the standards of a different interpretation and um in the case of uh, the female thor there's so much you could do. Thor has a daughter. There are Valkyries. Yeah. There are so many female Guardians. You could have done so much. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, those, uh, you know, <clears throat> one of the best things I think about uh, Thor as a character in, in Marvel are the side characters. I think that they've been really, you know, consistent and re well represented in, uh, you know, the first movie and a lot of the uh, animated Thor stuff, which I think is probably where I'm more familiar with Thor as a character, is through the really cool, like, different animated stuff that they've done on Netflix or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, his, like, band, I forget what they're called, like, the Fearsome Four or whatever, you know, but they're, like, these super cool, different, like, Ex-Guardian warriors. We see them, like, in the first movie really prominently. They're kind of in the second movie. And then they're just, like, straight killed off and non-existent for the rest of the series. And, like... Oh, dude, they were so cool in the first and, movie. And, like, I, I remember about. there was that female character who, again, my lack of knowledge of, of Marvel stuff is showing. But I remember being really interested in her and, like, oh, this is super cool. And they've got this, like, sort of relationship thing going on. And then all of a sudden Jane Foster comes in and becomes significant because there's always got to be a female, you know, damsel who's, like, super hot and, I guess, important to the hero for no real reason. Dude, I love that Eastern-inspired character. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they were all really cool. Um, and I think that that would have been an interesting With the bow way and to arrow do a and female stuff, That was so I just, cool. I think, like, Miles Morales, I think, is a great example of it being done right, personally, because I think that Miles is a character who isn't Peter Parker. That's the whole point, you know? He grows up in a totally different... Like, yes, he, he's an alternate world Spider-Man, but, like, he is not the Peter Parker story. He is a completely different character who grows up in his completely own circumstances with his own problems. He even has his own villains. It's There's not a even, reason like, why we call him Miles Morales Spider-Man. You yeah, know, like, exactly. you know he's different. Exactly. And, like, it's a great story. I love that one, too. Yeah, man. So Also, I he has completely different gadgets, everything. Like, that's oh, a different He has character. completely different powers. Yeah. It's a different spider that bites him. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, he can he can literally uh, you know produce an electric current and go invisible. Like that's part of his power set. Mm-hmm. That's not a suit thing or a gadget thing. So, and honestly, he's not usually uh, presented as being too like tech savvy, as far as I understand. I don't really think that that's his his skill set. So, mm. yeah, I, I think that mm. on on the whole, there are ways you can adapt the characters. And I think going back to Fantastic Four. <laughs> I think that they did a really good job of presenting these characters in a different way. I think that they were still the same characters, but they felt different. And as a whole, the movie, I think, changed from that. What did you think about it, though, Mason? Um, well, uh, uh, back to what Alex was saying about how, uh, you know, they're trying to make, you know, this character but black or this character but a woman. And I think, uh, and I'm going to go a little more broad about Hollywood in general because it's not just about Marvel movies or uh, superhero movies. Hollywood really thinks, and it's because of our PC culture um, growing more and more politically correct, they feel like they need a character to be black. They need a character to be a woman. They need, and, and when the reality is it's okay if this character is black or it's okay if this character is a woman, but they feel like they need it to be. They, and I, when I earlier was talking about how like I've lost faith in Hollywood to do Marvel correctly and I've stopped watching a lot of movies because of that, it's because their priorities aren't about making a good movie. That's not their main priority anyway. They have, there's a few things that they've started to prioritize over that, which is, one, political correctness. Um, and also, I think that they care a little bit more about making money than they do about doing a good job with the story. And so I'm okay with uh, them changing characters and stuff like that, but I just don't want them to do it because they feel like they have to. Yeah. And so, yeah. Oh, man, Mason, we could go on and on about what's wrong with Hollywood. Trust me, man. (laughs) I have so many bones to pick with them. And look, and look. It's literally (laughs) the foundation of what we're doing with our company. It's a big F you the whole, I mean, like, just it's, how it's done. The, the, the intent isn't a big F you. The it, intent... It, 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 my bad, my bad. It's my intent. My entire <laughs> your, thing is, your, I'm doing it intent. my way. Yeah. Come at me, dude. I think the intent of like, Evo as a whole, though, is we want to create a platform through which um, artists can, you know, create without having to worry about those sorts of constraints. We're not going to say you have to do things this way. Um, but... Uh, going back to it, I want to I want to ask now, kind of having heard about what you feel about that kind of uh, that means of representation and diversity and such. Um, do you think that that applies to that Fantastic Four movie, or do you feel like it was done well? Well, I can say this uh, about how it bombed. Um, you know, there's the controversy about um, you know diversity, and there's a lot of people that were like, "Oh, you shouldn't change this character. He's been white forever." You know, and I think. Because of the political correctness, the way the country's going, uh, and I'm not trying to make this about politics, sorry. Uh, I think they alienated the fan base that lo- or that was going to go to the movie because they love the Fantastic Four. Because I think they the the controversy surrounding it all made people think it's not about the Fantastic Four. It's about uh, it's about political correctness. Mm-hmm. And so, and I, what I'm saying is is that it's like what I was saying with Halo uh, before we started this podcast. The alien, they they're alienating some of their core fan base by trying to. I don't know. I mean, they're just there's some things that. Oh, I just think that the press around the movie became about that, and it wasn't about the movie, and that uh, scared some people off. Yeah, and I mean, I think to me that that sucks. You know, I I want to love movies. I want to love adaptations of things that I already love. I mean, um, <laughs> looking at the idea of like a hype cycle of something, right? Like you first hear and you're like, oh my god, they're making a blank movie, right? And then it's like you you start hearing, oh my god, the trailers and drop. I'm so excited, and then you see the trailer and it's like. It's either, whoa, that's freaking amazing, or like, oh my god, it's that, you know? And it's like, the idea that 
that whole super pure process of just like, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh my God, I'm more excited. Oh, Super Bowl trailer. And then like, boom, summer movie, huge blockbuster. Everyone's there day one, laughing their asses off and having a great time and being super invested in this. And we, we as an audience want a sequel, right? We're not forced a sequel. We want it. We want to see these characters more. We're willing to give our money. That's the service you've provided is this awesome story, right? But like the idea of that being tainted by something so like just not at all relevant to what any of the like fan base is about. Like, yeah, we want representation, but like not at the cost of anything. And I don't think that there has to be a cost. The whole point about being a creator, right, is that you can make shit. <laughs> you don't have to sacrifice anything. You can just make more. That's what I was talking about earlier about tokenism is it's like, if you really are telling me that you can't create a new character to fill that niche that we're gonna love, then why the hell are you writing? Like your job is to create stories and characters and plot lines and, and climaxes that we as an audience are just unable to forget and unable to not enjoy in the moment. So it's like, yeah, if you're really just like, yeah, oh, we're gonna make Peter Parker black because we gotta do that rather than do something amazing like make Miles Morales and then eventually have them because interact the Peter with each Parker's other. story too gets old after a while. Like if we're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it different, you're gonna make oh it black. Make God. it the best and fucking version of that that you're ever gonna make. And on that note, the movie Into the Spider Verse I think really hits on. I still that. need and to I, see that I man. Love I that saw the trailer when they do excited. the the origin story. It's him being tired of it. He's like, yeah, we're just we'll do this one more time. I'll just tell you guys all about it. I did all this stuff. It was really great. Like, they don't give the origin story in any more than they need to. And honestly, I think they mostly do it as a joke because I couldn't tell you of anyone I know who doesn't at the very least know, like, that Uncle Ben dies. Oh, sorry, spoilers for Spider-Man 1, 2, 3, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man 1 and 2. And you know what I mean? It's like, you know that. You know what I mean? You know Bruce Wayne is Batman. You know, it's like, it's just there are things that are so part of the collective consciousness at this point that, like, they don't need to be redone. Right? So yeah, I definitely don't want another Spider-Man origin story. I don't need a black Batman origin story of Bruce Wayne. You know what I mean? It's like Maybe in 20 years. Yeah, right? And and I think that's kind of the thing, right? When you cycle back around to it, sure. I mean, I'll tell you what, if we get a Masters of the Universe movie, I want an origin story for He-Man, because I couldn't tell you shit about that. Oh I'm boy. Super here for it. You you better stop with that. We don't talk we're not talking we'll, about He-Man. We'll, we'll right wait now. for adaptations to do that. But yeah, uh, but, uh, I think the, the point that I'm trying to make there is it's like it's appalling to me that um, movies have gotten to the point, and really media in general, even video games suffer from this, that like something political, something so far from what any of this is supposed to be can influence it so heavily that people don't like it. Like even without seeing Dude, what it was. That That's something that I really wanna strive for. Like I wanna, this is my own like kind of goal as like a creator too, I want to at one day like I strive to like make something that is controversial. It's something that people don't want to hear, but I make it and they still watch it to the very end. And at the very end, they can at least admit that they enjoyed it, even though they fundamentally disagree with the entire thing. It was still a good story, and they still took enjoyment. Magic Mike, but they're all furries. Why, Alex? Did you just spoil my freaking? No, I'm kidding. That's mean, not it. You mean That's Magic Mike? <laughs> No, I did not see Just kidding. Any... I love my furry crew. <laughs> hey, man, I, you're not going to get me to say anything on here. I'm not, I'm not going to say... I'm just not trying to disenfranchise people. Look, Look do, I'm do, indifferent. Do, do, I'm do indifferent. whatever you want to do. I, yeah, do there's there's no... Yeah, no one's, no one's trying to put anyone down here. If you're a furry, then but, a furry flag. But all I know is... But, like, that's the one thing that scares me, though. Because I want to do this. But like Mason said, you know, I don't want there to be people that are afraid to watch it. Cause like, I don't know, maybe I, I do something where, this is just an example, I write something like a God story. Mm. And Christians, or someone, this is just anybody, like a group of people attack it because they're like, this is gonna be bad, he's doing this to our God, this is so disrespectful. But they don't even give it a watch, they don't even give it a chance. So it scares other people, they're like, dude, I don't know if I can watch this, if I watch this movie, like, there's just too much controversy, you know? And I don't want people to be turned off over the things that I write before they even give it a chance. You know, because yeah. yeah, you might not like it in the beginning, and then uh, you know, fundamentally. But if you give it a chance, like it might be something well, you end up 
enjoying maybe even your favorite movie that's why even as you know admitting i'm not really a marvel fan anymore i still see every marvel movie because i go into all of them wanting to love it and i think the last time i really loved one it was guardians of the galaxy one I think that was the last Marvel movie, other than Spider-Man: Homecoming, which I still won't really count as a Marvel didn't Logan movie because come out after? it's more of a yeah, Sony movie. Yeah, but Logan movie. wasn't. I don't think was it made by Marvel. Logan was technically a Sony movie. Yeah. Um, they're not. I'm, I'm talking MCU wise. Really the last annoying. MCU movie I really loved was Guardians of the Galaxy. I had a great time at Thor Ragnarok, but I also had a lot of just like dead boring moments in that movie. Which uh, I did not have a great time at that movie. Also. Um, I will say that I've watched almost every Marvel movie, but I didn't even know Thor Ragnarok or the, the <laughs> second Thor exists. Exist. See, yeah, I don't right. even know, man. Do you know that Iron Man has three movies? Yeah, I know that. I already forgot what the se- oh second movie was Whiplash. Third movie was I think Mandarin. Yeah. I remember the first movie. I love the first Iron Man, but first Iron Man was good. I actually watched it two days ago. <clears throat> Dude, it's it's freaking yeah. still holds did, did up, doesn't wait, it? Did you see the Vision yeah. movie? It was ten years ago. <laughs> There's no vision movie. There's no vision movie. The, there yeah. should be. I'd so watch the it. The Iron Man movie was ten years ago. Isn't the that Iron Man movie was ten That's years ago. That's a decade. And I think old that was the last man. time that I can say I really loved what Marvel was doing. I'm actually gonna uh, pump the brakes on this for a hot second because we're running a bit long. So I figure let's take a break either here and uh, watch we'll come back next week as we finish up this conversation. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, Come back next week to hear us talk about this topic further, more specifically um, the Marvel MCU and our thoughts on it, our opinions, and our hopes for it in the future. Thanks, everyone.